What is up guys, Lord Nick here bringing another One Piece card game deck deck and in this deck deck guys we are going to be jumping into Rob Lucci. So Rob Lucci is a mono black leader who came out in OPO3, he had a little bit of a surge in OPO3, kind of taking over the spot from Smoker a bit. Um, predominantly due to the fact that he had a lot of good mid-range and lots of good early game pressure. Um, this deck still has quite a bit of good early game pressure, and honestly, I think that it has gotten better with the addition of Dressrosa. And I think that now, instead of splashing Navy, you, you go into kind of a 50-50 split between the CP9 that Rob Lucci is known for and the Dressrosa cards. And the big reason I think about this is that synergy-wise, synergy both of these kind of decks want to do very similar things. They want you to draw a ton of cards, they want you to discard and, and trash a ton of cards, and they want you to constantly be putting out pressure. Note, if I had the space, if I had the availability to add in a couple of different cards here, I might do it. But I didn't want to sacrifice a lot of 2Ks, and we'll go into some of that discussion later. But let's just jump into the premise behind this whole deck. So this deck here starts off with a lot of early game searching power between three Spandoms and three Rebeccas. You could move it up to a four of each, but then you'd have to be dropping down Leo by one, and you probably want to be dropping down... Uh, probably a Bluno by one at that point. And I just valued those cards a little bit more. Um, so having three of each searcher, I think is efficient enough to allow you to be able to find the cards you need to find. Um, and you don't want to flood your board with too many of these searchers. So early on, the hand that you're looking for is one or two or both of these searchers in an opening hand. You do want to try to go second. The extra card draw is super useful with this deck. Um, and while you don't really have anything that is a two drop play, what it does allow you to do is you can potentially get two searchers out on turn one if you happen to open that way, or you get a searcher out and still have um, resources for the following turn. You have a lot of four drops, so being able to go second allows you to be able to start playing those four drops efficiently. So what is the general pattern of this deck? What are the general card combinations of this deck? I've talked about two very unique packages, but in those unique packages, they have a lot of crossover in what they want to do. So starting off, let's talk about the CP9 package. We have three Spandom just for our average searcher. Pretty easy. The very next CP9 we run is going to be four of, of Khalifa. She's a 2K searchable, uh, searchable 2K counter. She is on play draws you two cards you do have to discard two but she also reduces the cost of a character by two so and it puts out a 4k body now if she was a 5k body i think this card is just insanely good but she's a pretty solid card nonetheless she allows you to dig through your deck more fill up your yard which then enables you to use your kakus or allows you to get your luffy's online on play so that's pretty good pretty powerful the next cp9 card that we have is kumidori we are running three of him he is a generic four drop 6k the reason we are running him if we just play him on turn two it's a lot of pressure that your opponent's going to have to deal with or if he ends up in your yard due to discard, say you play a, a Khalifa, he's an easy card to be discarding because you can get him back with Bluno. It makes him super powerful. Now note, we are not running any uh, Fukaku in this deck, and the reason is is that I valued the 2k that was offered by Bartolomeo over the ability to KO, uh, 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 or not Fukaku, Fukuro, um, and I valued that from Bardo a little bit more. Um, and so as we're looking into the next one that we do have in the deck, we have four of, Ka of Kaku. I was messing around with moving him down, but the pressure that Kaku adds as a five drop 6k is just too valuable. Um, he is also a way to recover some cards to the bottom of your deck. And because of the fact that we have six searchers and four uh, and eight cards that each dig to each before we even get into our events, they're just super powerful ways of just getting us up there and getting us tempo. Um, and then Kaku also has the ability on play, if you put those two CP9 from your yard back to the bottom of your deck, he then can pop something that is three or more. So where this kind of comes in play is that our main way of enabling Kaku to get bigger things is coming from our Dressrosa package. So we'll get to that later, but base-wise, Kaku on turn on turn three is actually a pretty solid play just to get rid of some of their early mid-game strats uh, kind of combination of stuff that we see right now. As for our other five drop, that is the round close to rounding out our dress our CP9 package is Bluno. We have four five drop Blunos with you with a uh, Dawn put on him. He then gets a blocker, and then when he dies, if uh, 
it, when he is on KO, you may put a character with four or less that has CP9 from your graveyard to the to the field. So this gets us back Khalifas, this gets us back Spandums, and this gets us back our uh, uh, Kumadoris. And so the reason that this is, a, is such a powerful card for us is the fact that it can enable us to search more, which is just super useful. It enables us to search more, super useful, and creates a 4K body, or just creates a solid 6K body that is a pain in the butt for them to deal with. So this is recursion, this is very strong, it gives us a blocker, saves us life, and is tempo on his own. Pretty solid card, overall really like him in the deck. I mean, if you're running CP9, you have to be running Bluno, he's just super valuable. Um, and then lastly, to round out CP9 characters, we have two more Rob, we have two six drop Rob Bluchies. On play, you can uh, return, I think it's two, uh, it's kind of hard to read right now actually. But I believe it is two. Uh, let me see if we can zoom in a little bit and see if we can get that Rob Lucci highlighted a bit better. All right, yeah. So return two CP9 from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order, and this card gains rush. So it's a six drop, 7K rusher. Pretty solid, very good rate. You get cards back for it. It's a very good turn three play um, that can enable you to either clear cards or to just put pressure on your opponent. We are only running two of them because he has no counter, and I believe that the Dressrosa option of Monkey D. Luffy is just a better card. Um, the rush is pretty impactful, but we don't want to overload it. Um, and because we're not straight CP9, there is sometimes a chance where we've already done like a Kaku and we can't immediately go into, into Rob Lucci. So that being said, we do have two more um, cards that are CP9. Those are going to be our events, and that is Tempest Kick Sky Slicer. Uh, so this one allows you to KO a character with cost zero or a stage of three cost or less. I felt like that effect is pretty valuable overall. Um being able to get rid of like we can reduce the cost of our opponent stuff pretty easily if we have an Orlumbus on field we can reduce anything four or under down to zero and sky slicer just takes care of it or if they have a stage for instance an actual rebecca dressrosa deck we can just pop their stage and that can actually really ruin the tempo of their play if they have to one usually they're not digging for a second one that usually ends up in their yard so if we remove it they're now forced to change their turn to dig to find that to get the tempo back it's a very valuable two cost and then on top of that if it comes out as a trigger this just nets us two cards which we really want to have more draw power so having two cards come from this pretty powerful the next card that we have is air door air door is a four drop that allows us to uh, look at the top five, as long as we have a CP9 leader, look at the top five cards of your deck, play one character with cost five or less and CP9 in its types. So this can hit a Bluno, this can hit a, it can hit everybody but Rob Lucci. So this is just a way of finding a card to get us something out um, if we really are in a desperate bind. Um, on top of that, out of, out of life, it allows us to get a three cost or lower from a black three cost or lower from our yard. So the cool part about that is it does not have to be a CP nine. If it's from, from, from life, which means we can find a Leo. If we need to pop something small, we can find a, uh, Bardo if we need a blocker. Um, and then we can find one of our two searchers if we really need, if we want to get more cards into hand which can net us some counter power, which is where the extra 2Ks is kind of more important, I think. So this card has a lot of playability. Lastly, let's go into our Dressrosa package. It's a pretty straightforward Dressrosa package. We are running two of Gats because we still want the ability to target our Orlumbus to be able to clear something. Um, he's also a 2K searchable, pretty useful. Uh, four of Leo, this is a way that we can KO stuff. It also gets cards into our yard. And FYI, our leader wants us to KO things to be able to restand him. If we have extra cards in hand, we can discard to restand and attack again. So what we can do is if they have low costs, we can use Leo to do that, or we can use Orlumbus to reduce things to be able to pop things. The standard ta tactic that is used in the Dressrosa package as is. So then we have our Rebecca, who's our searcher. We have Bart, who I've already talked about, is our three drop 3K blocker. He is also a 2K that we can search for. Pretty useful. So, so far that's five uh, searchable 2Ks. We could up the Barts, but there wasn't really space. We had to make space for other cards. I felt like there was other cards that were more valuable. Um, and we have to have enough CP9 because it does CP9 do care about putting CP9 back. So... That is, so we needed to make sure we had enough of those. Four of Orlumbus, he is our main cost reducer outside of Khalifa. 
um, and he's a better one than Khalifa. He does require us to KO one of our Dressrosa characters, which we have a plethora of one drops. We do not care if they get one K if they get KO'd by Orlumbus. That's perfectly fine. Um, then we have four of Sabo. He is a blocker for five. He is a six cost. He then makes all of my stuff not be able to be KO'd by effects for this next turn. Pretty epic. And then on top of that, he draws us two cards and gets trashed us two cards. Very, very useful. Very good way of funneling through our deck to find the cards we need and gives us some more sta stability in blockers. Yes, most of our blockers are on the high end. We are running two four ofs of five cost blockers, but both of them have enough innate value in what the deck wants to do. And then to round out our package of the Dressrosa side, we have a four of seven drop Luffy. He has the ability to attack active characters. Um, without Rush, he is a little bit more clunky, but he is still very strong and he's a great finisher for our deck because we can drop him on a turn. So let's say we have Orlumbus and a Rebecca out and then we go into our, th uh, we go into our fourth turn. And it's a turn eight. So what can we do this turn? Well, what we can do this turn is we can drop a Luffy. We can swing Rob Lucci. If we can clear a character if we need to. Any of their exhausted characters, sure. So let's say Orlumbus can clear another character. That's fine. Or Orlumbus can go face. Rob Lucci can go face. That's two 5Ks at face. That's okay. They have to counter some of that. That's not that bad. And then if we have, say, a Rebecca or a Leo already out, we can drop a Leo um, we can use Orlumbus, pop that character to minus four one of their characters that are standing, drop Leo, get rid of anything that was a five cost or less, and then we can play a Luffy on top of that just to have Luffy set up for the next turn. We can also, if we still have two cards in our hand, which is very likely with this deck, we can then use Rob Lucci, get rid of those two cards, restand and clear anything else, or put in more pressure. That's potentially three attacks on life or three cleared of tapped characters along with another character clear and a Luffy on play. So even though we're not getting pressure with Luffy that turn, the deck already has a lot of ways of putting pressure prior to that that enables Luffy, the the seven drop Luffy, though he doesn't do anything on active on play for us here, he's still just a threat for the next turn. They have to find a way to answer him. If they can't find a way to answer him, pretty much that turn that I just described, we just put three cards into our yard. Um, that's generally... Um, Oh, and and sorry, and Orlumba's trash is two from the uh, from the deck. So that's five cards that we just put into yard. If we had two other cards in yard, then the next turn Luffy gets to swing twice. That's pretty good. We don't end up needing our Rob Luffy to swing twice because Luffy can swing twice. And if we happen to have a Kong gun, it's over, right? Like, yeah, that's the obvious combo. But Kong gun is also just our last Dressrosa card. It's a very, very good way of putting pressure on my opponent. I can use it early to really put some pressure in. I can use it late to really add in some final KOing. Um, it does require you to have 15 in the yard, but as we've already showcased, both packages really like filling up the yard. So it's not that hard for us to get there. And then recycling the yard is very, very easy for us. Now, note that the weaknesses of this deck is that we don't have ways of healing our life. So the way that we stop from taking life is one, we use a lot of 2Ks and a decent number of blockers. And two, it's going to be putting in tons and tons of pressure on our opponent. If we have to take a turn where we take an early turn of just popping something with Leo and then restanding Lucci to swing in Lucci to get extra tempo on them do it like that that's perfectly fine if we are putting tons of pressure on our opponent i feel like this deck has the ability to out pressure most of the decks in the format or be able to clear a lot of the things that get in the way that are there a lot of decks are running low in low to the ground blockers leo is pretty efficient at getting rid of it rob lucci is a good way of resanding and getting past them uh or lumbus helps you helps your leos be very good at clearing those Overall, this deck has a lot of ways of countering a lot of the things that are prevalent in this current meta. Tons of blockers, a lot less 2Ks, and the fact that they want to do a lot of setup, and uh, exception being red, really. But in red, it, we're kind of racing red to a degree. We race them. Against Whitebeard, we can outrace Whitebeard pretty easily. As everything we're playing basically answers the thing they're playing. And we have so many 2Ks that we can search up, we can just sit there with our 2Ks and say no on their attacks. They're coming in usually pretty early with just straight up attacks, and with 2Ks, we're just like, nah, we don't care. And then if we do need some cards in hand, we can take a little bit of damage. We are a, a mono colored, so we have five life, which is super relevant in this meta. 
So overall, this deck has a lot of legs, and I think this is probably a combination of the packages that will get there. Now, if these are the exact cards, I'm not 100%. I haven't gotten to do a lot of deck testing with these, but I am very, very fond of how this deck has been shadow playing. I've gotten to test a little bit online with it, um, and I've done a lot of test hands with it. Um, and basically, the, the opening hand, you want to have at least one of the searchers, and then the rest of your cards can be... Pretty much anything else because we're pretty much we're pretty low to the ground overall five is the highest of most of our curve the exception being our finishers which we have six finishers uh that are six and seven so we still get to play in you know late turns we can still play multiple cards or add up dawn and kind of go in this deck has a lot of legs it has a lot of tempo but you want to be on the attack more so than on the defense you do have some options to go on the defense early but, it, I mean, it, your defense is made to help you be able to start putting pressure on your opponent. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. hope you guys get to try out this deck. If you do, please let me know down in the comments how you're liking it. Or if you have any questions about cards or, or ideas for these decks, please, again, leave it in the comments. If you like the videos, hit the like button, subscribe. Um, and I just want to hear from everybody. I want to know what other people in the community are thinking of. I am hopefully going to be able to keep putting out deck techs. I'm going to aim for one a week here going forward. Um, but I got really excited about building this one. Um, and I think my next one's probably going to go over my yellow purple croc, who I think is the deck I'm going to be playing this next week. Um, it might be my Isha list. I'm kind of on the fence. I have both of those being built up. I have this deck ready to go as well. So let me know guys. Hey, what, what deck do you want to see next? Um, I guess we'll, we'll put those two out there. I have, uh, green, uh, green, black Isho, which is going to be very Navy and supernovas oriented, or I also have a purple yellow croc, which is very much Baroque works and some big mom, a decent number of big mom, but also a lot of the new yellow stuff that I think was really good, like beaches and Yamatos. So feel free to let me know which one you want to see next. And I hope to see you guys in the next video till then have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye guys.